I'm today I'm going to talk about anti-aging matrix stiffness, uh, anti-aging and matrix correlation between them. So first, I want to starting I want to start from this pages. So as you know, the aging is outcome of epigenetic change. So uh, not recently, but from within yeah, so within 10 years, so led by this uh, David Sinclair professor in Harvard Medical School, he studied the aging from the small, small living things, and then finally they find out uh, digital DNA is forever, but analog epigenetic change makes aging. So, for example, when you imagine the this kind of CD, and then digital all the information is already inside of the CD, but over time this CD can be scratched or can be damaged or stained from other external things, and then the CD reader, they cannot properly read the digital, digital signal. So we can imagine this kind of C CD as a digital information, and the staining and scratch is epigenetic change. So over time, the mouse can be aged. And then when you go in deeply, uh, left one is uh, normal young mouse, and right one is old mouse. And then, over time, your body can be damaged from the UV or stress or a lot of toxic. And then each time, the cell, they want to repair that DNA break, DNA damage. So from for the young mouse, in the cellular level, they can well, they can well maintain their cell phenotype because they can successfully repair the DNA damage. But over time, when they cannot repair the DNA damage, they lose their cell-specific lineage gene expression. So the cell can be more euchromatic structure, and then they are aged. And then I want to ask by myself, how the stiffness affect the aging of a cell. So I try to find many paper regarding that, but I cannot find that exact paper to answer this question. And then, what is the underlying mechanical transduction pathway if the stiffness can affect the aging? So I want to propose like this. Uh, if I culture fibroblast or MSC on three different stiffness, and then with this DNA breaker, yeah. And then after certain 10 passes later, uh, definitely they will age on these three different stiffness. And then the final outcome of aging is different depending on stiffness or not. So previously, I trend we already observed on TCP. If we culture the MSC on TCP passage 10, they are stained by SA beta galactose. This is um, uh, one of the key aging marker. So this, this TCP, as you know, one gigapascal. So maybe this TCP and other stiffness they can show different aging speed. So I want to answer this question, and then, and as you know, as you can expect, different stiffness can make different proliferation rate. So uh, if I match it, the doubling time. And then maybe the for 20 kilopascal I should pass passage five, and then two kilopascal seven and ten, and then after matching the doubling time, so also aging is accelerate in high stiffness or in low stiffness. I want to answer this question, and after that, maybe beta galactose, uh, gamma H2X DNA damage marker, and then other heterochromatin marker can be stained. And then further, if I confirm this phenomenon, 
I want to know the underlying mechanism. Acting, actomized contract activity or any microtubule, they can be involved. And then later, maybe DNA methylation to know the DNA clock, and then some other epigenetic gene can be checked by PCR and ICC. So at the moment, the, the key message of the aging is that actually this, uh, this is not exactly what I expect. When I think about aging, aging is some kind of more heterochromatic structure, I feel like. But according to the current literature, they find out aging code euchromatic structure rather than heterochromatic. So this is very well known and then well reviewed by many nature series paper. So why it happened? So normally as a young cell, they are heterochromatin. They are tightly controlled gene expression depending on the cell type, which means neuron cell, uh, other genes should be silenced, but neurogenic genes should be activated. So they maintain their cell phenotype under the tightly controlled epigenetic repression. But or, over time, when cells are aged, they open all the chromatin. So in case of neuron cell, they also open the other like bone, bone gene or muscle gene. So they lose their identification. This is some key message of the aging now at the moment. So as a young cell, the uh, gene turn on and turn off, they are well controlled by the uh, epigenetic eraser or writer. But for older people, uh, they have this dislegation of eraser writer. So finally, they all open the chromatin. So this is some whole marker of the aging. So under this phenomenon, how people understand the aging? Sorry. So ah, this is the key message. Uh, for regulating the epigenetic change, SIR twins is one of the A stack enzyme. A stack, as you know, histone deacetylation. They turn off the gene. So SIR twin is a class three A stack. So uh, interestingly, this A star class three sirtuin have double plane enzymes, which means uh, they can control the epigenetic regulation, which means turn off, and then also they are involved heavily involved in DNA repair. So for example, this A star sirtuin they normally have too low gene regulation, which means they suppressed, and then DNA repair. So uh, they maintain heterochromatic structure while turning off the gene, mm, specific gene. But when there is a DNA damage, this sirtuin move to for the DNA repair. And then what happened? This sirtuin they cannot suppress the gene, so some DNA are activated. Some DNA start to be transcribed, and then they turn to euchromatic structure. And then when they finish the repair, they come back and then turn off the gene. Uh, this is a normal situation, but when the DNA is more accumulated, the third twin cannot go back to suppress the gene, and then the cell lose their identity. And this is um, called aging. So why? So this a star class three third twin, they are busy for DNA repair. So they never go back to histone to repress the gene. So th this is some current art of the aging in cellular level. So yeah. So now we go back to our um, key paper for. Uh, sorry. Uh, go back to our key paper from. Matrix stiffness and anti-aging or aging. So I try to find many paper, actually but not many. So there are two group. They are pursuing this topic. So first one is uh, Chris Ancestry group, 
they published two paper regarding nature material advanced science. So they suggest mechanical memory and dosing influence stem cell fate. And then in the next paper in advanced science, they also used um, stiffening gel for understanding some chromatin epigenetic change. So from these two papers, we can little bit understand how the matrix can govern the aging or anti-aging. And then smartly, the Shibashanka group, they published four papers regarding this issue. So I introduced one by one briefly. So this uh, NCS group, they are more focusing on, focusing on some biomolecular, biochemical signaling, how stiffness can affect the biochemical signal and then affect the uh, aging or some stemness. But in Shibashanka group, they more focus on more deep biomolecular level. Uh, how some DNA are they change in the location in very in nanometer. So as you know, this is a well known paper in published nature material, mechanical memory and dosing influence stem cell fate. So normally we culture the MSC on tissue culture plate. Their stiffness is around three gigapascal. And then, but as you know, when they are longer culture, they are the cell are aged. Aged means cell are spreading, they, they are proliferation rate very low. So they want to know why it happened. So they make a UV reactive softening gel and then they can tune the mechanical dosing on high stiffness. So sometimes they culture the MSC very short period on the high stiffness, or sometimes they culture longer time. So they find out when they culture MSC on high stiffness on short time, uh, they can be differentiated well in adipogenic or osteogenic. But when they culture the MSC on high high stiffness, even though they change the stiffness to the soft, they already memorize their high stiffness, so they only go to the osteogenesis. So which means epigenetic change already, uh, epigenetic is already changed, right? So we can say that depending on how long you culture your cell on, on matrix, especially in high stiffness, the cell already memorize the microenvironment, so they induce epigenetic change. In, the, in this context, more prone to osteogenesis. And uh, four years later, uh, they want to know, this uh, title is Extended Exposure to Stiff Microenvironment Lead to Persistent Chromatin Remodeling in Human MS MSC. So they want to further question what can be uh, what is the underlying biochemical mechanism? How epigenetic change? So they make this kind of softening gel. When the UV light on, the stiff gel turns to be soft. So they make 33 kilopascal as stiff and 5 kilopascal as soft. So they find out, and one day later of culture, yap, azure acetylation, they are highly enhanced in stiff, as you expect. In the soft, they are less, yeah, less acetylation, more less active. And then, uh, this is their quantification. And then, how they change? So they find out uh, nuclear volume is change. Soft, they are more, uh, less volume. And then, they are more condensed. They are, on the soft, the nucleus is more condensed, and the stiff, they are more decondensation. So, and then they, this condensation decondensation, they are highly regulated by epigenetic acetylation, erasure, H dot, and writer, HAT. So this is some um, stiff compared to, uh, compared to soft. So stiff nucleus, they are highly on regulation of HAT for increasing acetylation to open chromatin. And, as, and in the meantime, 
they suppress the ACE duct to turn, turn off this um, deacetylation gene. And then here, after one day later, they soft in the gel from the 35 kilopascal to 5. And then over time, their YAB, is, YAB expression go down, oscillation also go down, nuclear wear volume it also go down, and then condensation, they are more condensed. So this is, we can say, reversible. One day culture, they are reversible about this epigenetic change, as you read YAB. And then now they want to ask uh, if we prolong the culture time on high stiffness, they can be re always reversible or after a certain point they are irreversible. So when they culture the cell for 10 days, they find out this phenomenon is irreversible. So reversible means one day culture, stiff, stiff to soft, this oscillation, they are gone. When they change the stiffness to stiff to soft. But if we culture the MSC on 10 days of stiffness, high stiffness, and then change to soft, but they are still oscillated, which means some epigenetic change already exists, and then they cannot go back to normal status. Normal status means soft. They cannot perceive the softness. So this is their quantification. And then, yeah, so they, they find out, uh, depending on how long you culture the MSC, or even in, we can assume that some other cell, when they are exposed to high stiffness, they cannot go back to other stasis. And then they cannot perceive the microenvironment, especially mechanical transaction, very well. And then from next paper is uh, led by the Shivashanka groups. So they want to know more detail about um, epigenetic or mechanical transfer change. So nuclear deformability and telomere dyma dynamics are regulated by cell geometric constraint. So as we already observed this kind of cell behavior, one is rectangular, one is circular, and then they check over time, 0 to 45 minutes, how nucleus they are changed. How nucleus change. So in rectangular, the changes, mm, not many change. So imagine they culture the fibroblast in rectangular shape, confined area. Only, only this area is fibronectin coated. So they cannot spread out. So under this confined area, a rectangular, Nuclear uh, size, they never change that much. But in case of circular, they are a little bit changed. Okay? So this is their image. Over time, in, in rectangular form, they never change. But in circular, red, zero minute, and then 36, and then six minute here, green. So they are fluctuated, nucleus. So here they are you can see their fracturation of nucleus, and then this is all the cell, and so we can say that uh, somehow, in depending on the ECM area and confinement, the nucleus sometimes they are fracturated or sometimes they are not fracturated, and then they want to know the some um, H2B is a marker of the histone, and then telomere, telomere is the telomere govern the aging of the cell and then replication of the cell. So they capture, they stain H2B as a histone marker and the telomere as a red. And then they find out rectangular, uh, their changes, not that much. But in circular form, the nucleus, histone, and telomere, they are changed very much, which means from the when the nucleus they are fluctuated, also histone, and then so DNA also fluctuated. Mm. So they find out. So this is some how they are fluctuated in 3D phenomenon. And then they want to they want to know 
when this nucleus and then this histone and DNA they are fluctuated, is there any relationship between the mechanical transaction and this fluctuation? And then they using the cyto D, as you know, actin uh, polymerase inhibitor. So this is the y axis you can imagine how they are fluctuated. So rectangular, so 0.3, and a circular, 0.6, two fold change. And then when you see in circular, they inhibit the ectomycin contraction using blebistatin, the fluctuation, they're gone. And then in the rectangular form, when they reduce the lamin level, as you know, lamin is some outer membrane of nucleus, when they remove the lamin, and then the fluctuation is going up. And we can say that the lamin level is very important. Lamin is less in the circular form, and then from and then ectomized contraction also very important because they they are key for moving the cell. This moving movement also can change the nucleus and as well as inside of the chromosome dynamics. So they suggest this. Uh, here, when they culture on the rectangular form, they are high lamination level, and then this mm, heterochromatin over time, there are very little change the location, but in circular form, they have less laminacy level, and then more dynamic change over time, mm. and then they are governed by the mechanical transition pathway in terms of ectomyosin contraction. Mm. So more deeply. Uh, they analyze again same platform, and then they check actin dynamics couples extracellular signal to the mobility and molecular stability of telomerase. Actually, tel telomeres. When they even they actually they use these telomeres to track the DNA. They didn't uh, link this one to the aging, but I just want to get some idea from this paper. So here, they similarly perform the assay. They culture the rectangular or round. Then they find out on the round nucleus, this is some, uh, their histone movement over time. So they are very changed. And then here, they are displacement very fluctuated. So rectangular. So how they are fluctuated? Rectangular, they are, mm, this is some y-axis is the distance of their fluctuation. Distance is like that, but circular, they are more fast. And then, oh, right, this is two gram means, they use some, they compress the cell. And then in rectangular form, Rectangular form, when they are compressed, they are more, they are more induce some more nuclear movement by the external force. So here they found out from the biomolecular like TNF alpha as well as external force, they can induce some movement of the histone molecule. So this is their uh, key message. So here, as you know, now this is some uh, rectangular and circular. This each histone or DNA complex, uh, rectangular form, they are just dynamics like that. But in circular form, depending on the uh, ECM confinement, they are more fluctuated dynamics. So they are more easy to link together, and then, which means they can have more chance to interact. So from the very deep finding, they find this phenomenon. And then from these two paper, maybe, ah, so I skip this one. And then they find out, they published these two paper 
in penis as well. So one, one paper is about they culture the fibroblast in, in circular confined area, and then this is the without confinement. And then they find out uh, this uh, confined and circular form, because as you, you, you can see before, their DNA molecular histone, their more dynamics. So this dynamics, they can make the differentiation of the fibroblast to IPC-like cell. Yeah, but when, when we culture on 2D structure, they maintain their phenotype, and they never go to the IPS-like cell. So they find out under very, or just ECM's confined structure, and then because of the confined structure, the chromatin dynamics increase with the reduced laminase level, and then they are prone to de-differentiation. So they suggest this concept in PNS paper. And then next one, to fully utilize this concept in biomedical field, they rejuvenate the fibroblast by mechanically programming. So concept is very similar. They culture the fibroblast, this uh, confined area, for a certain time. And then they find out this fibroblast is more young, more reactive. So they say that this is some rejuvenation anti-aging of the fibroblast. How? They make the cell, make the nucleus and DNA histone more dynamics for certain period. And then this, this dynamics culture period can make the fibroblast more young, more stem, high stemness. So because of that, they have more, um, this is the normal fibroblast. This is some after confined cell culture, they are more high cell contraction, which means they are more fibroblastic gene activity. So, and then after reading this paper, and then I want to know, okay, I, maybe matrix can change, everything to change, right, somehow. And then maybe high stiffness, they can show more euchromat structure. And then maybe this is late, can be related to some aging. So I want to know this metric stiffness also change in aging people. So I found out some key paper, and then they mentioned that when aging, ECM cross-linking increase, viscosity increase, fiber fragmentation increase. But this paper they mentioned ECM stiffness decrease, but other paper they mentioned stiffness also enhanced. So maybe this is some, some controversial depending on the tissue type. But anyhow, ECM change over aging. And then cytoskeleton level, actin polymerization increase, and then uh, microtubule decrease. So also some, uh, micro, some cytoskeleton component, they are change over aging. And then mechanosensitivity, uh, yaptas, nucleocolization, they are decreasing. And then some MFPK, m activation, something happened. And then nuclear mechanics, so they are changed. Um, mutate laminae. And the cellular force, they are enhanced. So finally, we can say that when you compare the young and old tissue or cell, it seems stiffness, they are controversial. Some people say young is more stiff. Well, some people say old is more stiff. But cell size, they are shrinked in old. Cell stiffness, so, but somehow, they are increasing generally. Focal adhesion, acting more enhanced. Microtuber reversed. But nuclear mechanics and traction force, they are enhanced. So I find out over aging, some ECM or even cell stiffness also change. But I'm not sure one direction. So, I want to know this. So from the summary of the my previous finding, um, research survey, I found out aging induced uh, laminacy impairs. Uh, as oh, I want to share one key paper about this. Yeah, this is some um, published in 2006 in Science. So they say that 
laminate decrease and deposit in nuclear limb in aging cell. So I, before reading this paper, I always think about laminate scale the ECM stiffness. More laminate, more ECM, stif more ECM stiffness, they are correlate. But here they mention laminate decrease is also some marker of the aging. So here, let's say this is some uh, seven years fibroblast and then 87 years and then this is some progeria syndrome patient fibroblast. Progeria is uh, accelerating aging syndrome. Uh, even they are 20s old, their uh, biological aging is 80. So this is some uh, marker of the aging. So laminate level, they are dominantly decreasing here in aging cell, as well as this progeria syndrome patient. The LAP2 is also, mm, LAP2 is LAP2 and HP1 gamma and 3 methylation K9. You can consider this, this is some heterochromatin marker. So young fibroblasts, they maintain heterochromatin structure. They properly depressed some gene. They should not be turning on. But over aging, this uh, heterochromatic structure, they are gone. So this is some key feature of the aging. Mm. So this is their quantification. And then they culture the fibroblast in the TCP over certain passage that they find out of all the cell, even they are young or they are old, over passaging this heterochromatin structure reduced. Reduced means they are more losing the suppression of that they are increasing euchromatin, right? They tend to increase euchromatin over passaging on TCP. But young cell, the, this slope is very low. But old cell, they are high. So anyhow, we can mimic this aging using the TCP. So I want to ask, when you culture this cell on soft cell, what will happen? They are maintain their stiffness, they are maintain this uh, H3K9 methylation, or also they are a little bit change, seminal change, I want to ask. So here they, and then when, when they look at, so here, but interesting point is that uh, their total level of lamin AC doesn't change. So here it looked, they are changing the laminate level, but the total uh, Western blood, total laminase level doesn't change, but they are more accumulate in the limb, outer membrane of nucleus. They find out this is some key marker of the aging. Uh, and it is also progeria cell, the, their laminase level, level when they are same, but they have different location. So they find out yeah, intracellular laminase level, they are decreasing in uh, yeah, intracellular laminase level, here they are change yeah, compared to young and old and progeria syndrome cell. So after reading this paper, so I suggest so as summary, I found uh, many paper, aging induced laminase impair, sometimes low intensity, sometimes nuclear limb localization. So, and then aging induced, definitely accumulation of DNA break. Aging induced, you command structure by histone 3 k methylation 3 low, and then HP1 gamma low. And then aging induced um, down regulation or dysregulation of the HDAC gene. And then, already report that laminate level, they promote this uh, HDAC3 class 3 activation to make some DNA repair, which means when the cell have low laminate or impaired laminate, they have poor DNA repair ability. So, and then aging induce this uh, third twin gene dysregulation to accumulate DNA damage. And then from the mechanical point, 
aging increases cell and tissue stiffness normally, and then high stiffness, but high stiffness induces laminase increase normally. So, and then high stiffness induces eucoma structure. So, all the things when they are combined properly, um, aging cell have high cell stiffness, tissue stiffness, and then maybe lamination level have high, I and mean, have high, but uh, this other finding they mentioned, lamination level doesn't change or a little bit low, or their localization change. So um, this is a little one step behind of our understanding. So I want to ask, how does this metric stiffness affect the aging of the fibroblast or the mesenchymal cell? So when you go back to my question, does stiffness affect aging of the cell? And then why is the underlying mechanical transduction pathway during aging on stiff metrics? So for answering the question, I propose like when you culture the MSC or fibroblast, I'm not sure which one is more proper. Maybe for generalization, fibroblast is the best. So for fast accelerate, for some other uh, biomedical utilization, MSC also can be one of the options. So after pet stage three, if we have this cell line, we culture two or three different stiffness and then check their aging on, on passage 10 under DNA breaker. Because without any breaker, also it can be accelerated, it can be aged, but um, maybe to show more, to mimic more our real environment, I want to induce this DNA breaker. And then after checking that, maybe Bilibiori ask, stiffness can make different doubling time. High stiffness show more fast doubling time, so you should match the doubling. So I just, after matching, to check their aging and then want to check this marker and then after checking the stiffness can modulate the aging I want to know the mechanical mechanical pathway thank you